Hi, and welcome to my channel. So in today's episode, we're gonna look at Jessica's childhood favorite treat. It's gonna be a Smarties cookie. Jessica used to make this when she was little with her Auntie Wendy. Thank you, Auntie Wendy, for this uh, Smarties cookies recipe. I like cookies. I like Smarties. I like ice cream. And I like sandwiches. Hey everyone, welcome to episode eight, Giant Smarties Cookie Ice Cream Sandwich. This is our childhood right here. As usual, get ready with your apron. Let's start by getting out your scale. And in a mixing bowl goes 200 grams of butter. As well as 200 grams of light muscovado sugar. You'll need a paddle attachment. Bring out your stand mixer and turn it onto a medium speed. Beat the butter and sugar until it becomes light and fluffy. While that is happening, measure out in another bowl 300 grams of self-raising flour. Let's check on the beaten butter and sugar mixture. Give the mixing bowl a good scraping. Let's give it a few more minutes. Back to the mixer. Next, we are going to add in three tablespoons, or 45 grams, of golden syrup. Now onto that magical ingredient, Smarties. For this recipe, we will need 170 grams of Smarties. If you have any more than that, just eat the extra. Let's check on the beating butter again. This is what we're looking for, light and fluffy. Clean that paddle. Now we can go ahead and add in the flour. Add the flour in slowly while the machine is running on low speed. We don't want to overmix the dough. Next, pour in the Smarties. Cheeky, I saw that. Even after doing so many episodes, he still refuses to share. Let it mix for a few seconds. It's okay if some of the Smarties have broken up. This is what the dough will look like. Now it's my turn. Because there's no raw eggs in this cookie dough, you can eat as much of it as you like. <laughs> Clean the paddle. I will take care of that. If I had it my way, I'd eat the whole lot like this. Line a baking tray with paper. You can use an oil spray to help you stick the paper down. At this point, you can make little balls, about 25 to 30 grams each. It doesn't have to be accurate, but it helps in the cooking process to ensure they cook evenly. Bake them at 170 degrees for about 12 minutes, or until the edges become golden brown. Now that is the normal sized cookies. Now for the giant part. You will need a rolling pin. The rolling pin Avery is using has rings at the end for measuring the thickness of the dough. We will also be using a ring mould for the shape. You can use baking paper to help in the rolling process. Take out a good amount of dough and place in the centre of the baking paper. Use the ring mould as a guide. Place another piece of baking paper on top. Use the rolling pin to flatten. Grip the end of the baking paper as a support when rolling. Check the thickness. We want the thickness to be about one Smarty in depth. There we go. Take the ring mould and cut down. Twist to cut properly. Take the rest of the dough out to reuse later on, or eat raw if you're like me. Make a small square of baking paper because we are going to transfer the dough. We're going to place it in the fridge to firm up before cooking. This will help it keep its shape. Repeat that again to create the other side of the sandwich. Now that you have two resting in the fridge, the remaining dough you can roll into a log. You can use a chopping board to help you in rolling the dough into a log. You can then store this log in the freezer for up to three months and bake them whenever you're in need of a cookie or two. Ours did not last for three months, I ate them much sooner than that. In the meantime, the cookies in the oven should be ready. Let's have a look. Fresh, warm, thick. I want one right now. 
I like mine fresh from the oven. This tastes exactly like my childhood. I loved making cookies with Auntie Wendy and sneaking bits of dough when I thought she wasn't looking. We made this so often when I was little. I'm pretty sure I begged to make this every time I stayed with Auntie Wendy. Pull the baking paper off the baking tray to cool the cookies down faster. Let them rest on the table and then you can enjoy them. While that is happening and we have our oven still hot, let's go ahead and bake the giant cookies. Peel back the paper and place the ring mold on top. We are going to bake it with the ring mold so that it retains its shape. No need to oil the sides though. Because the giant cookie is rather thin, bake for about the same time as the small cookies. Avery is using a spoon to flatten the sides to keep it uniform and neat. Only do this while hot. It doesn't work when the cookie has cooled. The sides have shrunk, and that is why we didn't need the oil spray. Remove the ring. Be careful, as it can still be hot. This is how it looks once cooled. I don't think it's really a sandwich if the thickness isn't the same as a piece of bread. Repeat the cooking process again. Now, onto the ice cream. In a small pot, pour 70 grams of water and 200 grams of caster sugar. Bring the pot onto the stove and turn onto medium to high heat. Let that boil. In the meantime, measure in a mixing bowl 150 grams of egg yolks. Keep the egg whites separately. You can save them for another project, like meringues, or an egg white omelette. Place the egg yolks in a stand mixer and turn onto high. Use a probe thermometer and get ready a cup with water. The cup with the water is for the thermometer. We want the sugar water to boil to 116 degrees Celsius. All right, it's ready. Turn the heat off. Place the thermometer in the cup with water to cool down and to dissolve the sugar. Slowly pour the sugar syrup into the whisking egg yolks against the side of the bowl. Let that continue to whisk until it doubles in size. We want to whisk it until cool. While that is happening, measure in a large mixing bowl 480 grams of double cream and 20 grams of vanilla essence. Vanilla essence might smell amazing, but do not drink it pure. I may be speaking from experience. Start whisking it. Almost there. We want to bring the mixture to ribbon stage where we can see the whisk lines in the cream and that it holds its shape. Check the consistency of the whisking egg yolks. It should be light and cool to touch from the sides of the mixing bowl. Now it is time to fold in the double cream. Fold in batches. Use the spatula to bring the bottom of the mix to the top. Once the cream has been dispersed, you can mix in the rest of the cream. You can also use a whisk to help you fold. Check the consistency again and taste of course. Looking good. Place a slip mat on top of a tray. The slip mat will prevent mix from escaping. Fill the ring mold about halfway or two inches. Place the ring mold in the freezer for at least eight hours or if you're patient enough, overnight to really firm up. Pour the rest of the ice cream mix into a tray Tupperware and store in the freezer for a British summer day. The following day, it's time to assemble. Take the two giant cookies and the ice cream from the freezer. Look at that, nice and solid. Place the ice cream on top of one of the cookies. Avery is using a blowtorch to release the ring mold. If you don't have a blowtorch, you can use your hands or a warm towel to warm the sides. Be careful when you're using one though. Make sure you have, or you are, a responsible adult. A link for the blowtorch will be in the description below. We use ours a lot. Use the flame to kiss the sides. Don't hold it in the same spot for too long. We just need the ice cream on the sides to melt enough to release the mold. 
Time for the reveal. And there you have it. A perfect fit. Keep it in the freezer to firm up a little bit. Even though when we were cutting it, we didn't get perfect triangles and it was very, very messy to eat, it was totally delicious till the last crumb. I will also note we did not eat this all in one sitting. I promise, mum. Well, if you enjoyed what you watched and learned something, give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe to get notified for new content. See you next time! And most importantly, stay safe, stay hungry and stay curious. Bye for now!